Throughout this Advent season, we've been uh, looking at psalms from the lectionary. We've been joining with the church all over the world. And uh, through history, we've been hearing the words again of the psalmists. And uh, throughout this morning, we've actually heard a lot of the first half of, of Psalm 89. That's our, um, that's our lectionary text for today. And I'm, I'm not going to preach a, a long sermon. I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you about Psalm 89 before we jump into singing some songs about Jesus' birth. You know, Psalm 89 that we've been reading, we, we, we read the part that reminds us of his, about God's power and his love and his faithfulness. We, we lit the candle of love and thinking about the steadfast love of the Lord. We think of all his promises to his people, but just for a moment, I, I want to take a look at the other half of Psalm 89. In, in Psalm 30, Psalm 89, starting in verse 34, it says this, I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. Once for all, I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His offspring shall endure forever. His throne is long as the sun before me. Like the moon, it shall be established forever, a faithful witness in the skies. But now you have cast off and rejected. You are full of wrath against your anointed. You have renounced the covenant with your servant. You have defiled his crown in the dust. You have breached all his walls. You have laid his strongholds in ruins. How long, O Lord? Will you hide yourself forever? How long will your wrath burn like fire? Lord, where is your steadfast love of old, which by your faithfulness you swore to David? Remember, O oh Lord, how your servants are mocked and how I bear in my heart the insults of all the many nations with which your enemies mock, O oh Lord, with which they mock the footsteps of your anointed. Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen and amen. This is the word of the Lord. As we said, the, the Psalms are songs. They're poems set to music that help us engage all of ourselves, all of our minds, our will, and our emotions. They express the full scope of what it feels like to be human, to engage with a God who is so far above and beyond our capacity to reason. And this, uh, this Psalm 89, even though we, we heard a lot of things about rejoicing earlier on, this is actually a Psalm of lament. And the, the parts that we read earlier that, that we hear a lot during the Advent season, those are the happy parts, you know. But this is a psalm of lament, and the psalmist is writing a song here that says, God, we know how great you are. God, we know that you are faithful. We know that you always keep your promises. But honestly, God, if I look around, it sure doesn't feel that way. You said David's throne was going to last forever, God. I don't know if you're even looking, but that kingdom is gone. You see, this is an exile song. This is one of those songs that you can barely sing because you're so worn out with crying when everything has just been crashing down around you. Psalm 80, we talked about a few weeks ago. It, it, it said, God, we've been drinking tears by the bucket full. Maybe you felt like that before. And these songs, they're in our Bible to actually show us some things. They're, they're there to show us that, that, first off, that it's actually normative to feel that way, and it's okay to feel that way a lot of times. And it's, uh, it's actually there to also show us where we're supposed to take those feelings. We're supposed to take those to our Heavenly Father. So bring him all your hurt. Bring him all your pain. Bring him everything that's going on in you because he can handle it. This is a psalm of lament, and we need to learn to lament. We need to learn to process things with the Lord first. That's one of the greatest things I learned in my life experientially. Even, even over the last few years, been, God's been opening my eyes what it means to just actually engage with him to process these things in my life with him first and just see what he might do instead of me trying to fix everything for myself but let him do his work to heal to restore to bring these hard questions to him to see if he actually won't answer because he will it might not, not always look the way that we want but but he loves us and he will respond this is also the kind of song that we sing during Advent when we long for Christ's return, when we take a hard look around us and we say, God, this is not the way it's supposed to be. And we need you to show up and do something. It's a song that helps, for, helps us remember that God does answer his children, though. The psalmist asks, how long, O Lord, will you hide yourself forever? God says, no. I'm actually going to clothe myself in flesh and dwell among you. I'm going to show you what I'm really like. You know, the psalmist asks, God, where is your steadfast love? God says, it's right here in a child born in a manger. I've come to you. I'm with you. I 
came to live for you, to die for you, to give the life, to give you the life that I always intended for you. The psalmist prays, God, remember how much I hurt and how they insult me. God says, I do remember and I care. And I'm coming to take all the insults and the pain and all the sin and all the shame and I will take it to a cross so that you don't have to feel this way forever. God keeps his promises. We sang a lyric just a few minutes ago that, that we're actually going to sing again in a few minutes. All flesh shall see the token that God's word is never broken. Jesus is God's promise fulfilled. God's worthy to be trusted. When everything feels wrong, when we can remember the promises of Jesus, when he says in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus made that promise to his disciples as he shared a meal with them, resourced them for what was to come, a meal that we're going to share again together today. And as we turn to celebrate with joy the coming of our Messiah, Jesus, we remember that this child was born to die, to save us from our sins, to answer all of our cries for rescue. And I don't, I don't know what this Christmas season brings for you. For some, it may bring gladness, happiness, uh, for some of us, maybe it's just a more poignant reminder of how broken things are. But no matter how things feel, let's let Christmas remind us and anchor us into the truth that God keeps his promises and that he's worth trusting. God, I pray you would help us to believe that. That the miracle of Christmas would happen in our hearts, Lord, that, that you would open our eyes to the truth of the way that you are faithful to us that you have loved us, that you do love us, that you will never stop loving us. All your promises are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. And he calls us to himself to come and to lay down our burdens and to find rest in him. I pray that that would happen in us today. And over the next couple of days when we go into a lot of busyness and fun and some things not so fun probably, but Lord, I pray that you would give us a peaceful sense of your presence, that you would help us to, to root ourselves in the truth of what you've done. That it would take all of our mourning and turn it into to joy. And Lord, as we continue to wait in this season of Advent, God, we long for you to come, to return. And we say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But until that time, strengthen us and make us your faithful people that others may know the fame and the glory of Jesus. It's in his name we pray.